Hello everyone, and welcome back to Cameron's Modern Dystopia Corner. Recently, my friends have been asking, Hey Cameron, you're a privacy engineer. What do you make of this CSAM scanning thing Apple is rolling out? And I think what most of them were expecting was a well-informed tirade about tech impossible. overreach and personal I privacy, etc, etc. Only to be shocked when I responded, Why are you so surprised? You agreed to this. So to help you and my friends out, I figured I'd slap together a video examining what is Apple's CSAM scanning, why is this something we may want to worry about, and why no one should actually be surprised by this. But first, a message from our sponsor. You. It's you. You're the sponsor, you're the reason I make these videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell icon. So what is CSAM scanning and what is Apple actually doing? CSAM stands for Child Sexual Abuse Material. It refers to any content that depicts sexually explicit activities involving a child, including photos, videos, live streams, and digital or computer generated images indistinguishable from an actual minor. Apple's plan is to compare known CSAM images against images stored on iCloud connected Apple devices. And to be clear, this is not a surprise at all. Most companies already do this. Even if a company was stupid enough to think it's a good idea not to scan for, report, and remove CSAM that they might be hosting, many countries have laws requiring them to report and cooperate with local law enforcement if they identify that a user is uploading or in possession of CSAM. This is why there is so much language about working with law enforcement in the privacy and user agreements you definitely don't read when you sign up to use these platforms. What's different is that the scanning usually happens in the cloud not on your phone. But here, Apple is using your own phone hardware to compare a hash of images you keep on your phone against an index of CSAM from a national database. Even if you never upload these images to the cloud, they are still being scanned on your device. If enough potential matches are found, then a report is sent to Apple's own employees where, as I understand it, some poor soul will have to compare the actual image of CSAM on the device against the match in the CSAM database. And if it is a match, a report is sent to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and the user's iCloud account will be deactivated. Apple thinks this approach is a fair compromise because Apple is not forcibly exporting photos and shooting them back and forth to the FBI or other agencies. Instead, they are just starting their search by comparing hashes. See, hashing is a really powerful piece of cryptographic technology because it allows you to create a snapshot of a piece of media that you can then compare to another piece of media without ever knowing what the actual piece of media is. This is literally how any website worth its salt checks to make sure that you enter the right password. Another benefit is that hashes are so unique and random that two very similar images will ideally produce very different hashes, even if they only differ by a pixel. And I can't stress this enough. Most companies that do business online already use these technologies and have to do this type of reporting by law, which begs the question, what's the problem? This is where we get into a really precarious situation. When it comes to CSAM, it is difficult to make any argument against a proposal that attempts to curtail child abuse because the argument is literally The problem is tech ethicists and privacy advocates aren't only thinking of the children, they're thinking of everyone. I really hope I can make the claim that we all want to protect children and make sure they can enjoy a safe and happy youth free of abuse. And there are countless individuals across all industries working thankless jobs trying to make that happen. But when a technology as invasive as Apple's CSAM scanning project comes along, they are setting a powerful precedent for the power individual companies and governments should have over your expectation of privacy and defense against government overreach. Apple's technology is setting a precedent that it is okay for a government or corporation to actively monitor what is happening on your phone in the name of protecting children. A just cause that can unfortunately be co-opted by bad actors for the purpose of surveillance or censorship. In an op-ed for the Washington Post, researchers Jonathan Mayer and Anune Kulshestra, I really hope I pronounced that right, explained that Apple's design wasn't restricted to a specific category of content. A service could simply swap in any content matching database and the person using the service would be none the wiser. Likewise, the system is defined and controlled by Apple, a private company that, despite its personal commitment to privacy, has no obligation to be transparent in their practices. 
Some might argue that laws could help mitigate this overreach, but the irony is laws often make it easier to codify all the ways a technology can be used rather than the ways it can't. And if you live somewhere that has a government happy to make laws that give it unlimited power to use this technology, then it won't really matter. This tool could be used to figure out what you're doing on your device, even if it has nothing to do with CSAM. But even with all this in mind, I still have to ask, why are you surprised? When the vaccine rollout started, people were wrongly concerned it was an excuse for the government to put tracking chips in all the sheeple. To which I and the majority of the internet replied, what do you think phones are for? There is no shortage of memes and posts about how phones do this, and have done this, and will continue to do this well into the future. Movies are built on how the technologies we welcome into our lives only serve to further surveil and distort our reality. I mean, Black Mirror is an award-winning show based on just this idea. The only difference is that, much like most of post-2020 life, we're getting a very mask-off look at the future we have been slowly marching towards for decades. But, and I cannot stress this enough, I don't want this video to be a bummer. We can't do anything meaningful to change Apple's CSAM scanning policy, especially knowing they're just going to force a slightly different version of it on us in the next update. But there's still plenty we can do to claw back our digital rights. You can check out sites like fightforprivacy.co, where you can learn about your privacy rights and pester elected officials. You can check out digital rights groups like the Electronic Frontier Foundation, Knowledge Ecology International, the Electronic Privacy Information Center, and the International Association of Privacy Professionals, of which I am a member. And you can make sure to know your rights and stay engaged with efforts to pressure tech companies to take your right to privacy seriously. I'll make sure to include links in the description, but I cannot stress this enough. This is a problem we can fix. But unfortunately, that's all I have for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, make sure to ring the bell so you can get alert for my next privacy-centric tirade, and I'll see you next time.